Yay, we Yay. are rolling. So we're actually here in Dublin at the Physician's House. I think yes. it's the Physician's House on Kildare. And you can't really see the antiquity of this place, although we'll show you in a minute. But we have this crazy, what, 1600s? Can you see the 1861. 1861 painting behind us? So, folks, we are not in Silicon Valley. No. But we are with an entrepreneur who's not American. That's right. I'm from the UK. And? I'm Nick Housted, and I'm the CEO of TweetMeme. And all the Twitter lovers and social mediaites all know who you are. But let's talk about what you've been working on lately. So TweetMeme really behind the scenes is actually all about taking data from social media. So specifically for TweetMeme, it's to do with taking links. So we kind of were the first to start counting how many times you shared links on Twitter and then using that as a uh, social signal towards what is popular, what's not, and, and so that, that's how it works. So, but we wanted to take that a next step further and be able to, number one, go beyond just Twitter because there are other social networks, there are uh, uh, other sites with fantastic data that are now very much in real time. And we wanted to give the ability to get that data and deliver it to businesses and startups because the actual process of extracting data is actually very um, costly in terms of capital expenditure, operational expenditure to actually you know, even do a small kind of analysis of data is a massive project for most companies. So we wanted a, a kind of a data mining platform that was self-service. So behind the scenes, TweetMeme, we've always had a secondary business, which is B2B, and, but TweetMeme wasn't known for that, it's a consumer product. You know, we have our retweet buttons, we have the website, and so- Which we, are now customizable. Yes, and we, we wanted a brand that was known for doing purely B2B and selling data, so that product is called Datasift, and it basically allows anyone to come along and say, define what kind of content they want, you know, does this content, is it geolocated, is it mentioning these keywords, is it a certain sentiment? Um, a whole range of abilities. Uh, we actually, it's also integrated with um, another company we were speaking at the conference here, uh, Clout, who do um, a kind of new version of what I class as Google PageRank. They do uh, social authority, which I think everyone will start hearing a lot more about over the coming years. Social authority will be actually massively important in terms of um, finding. Yeah, it's yeah. just a, it's a it, you know, and there'll be, I'm sure, many other companies that apply different ways of doing it, but we actually uh, partner with them because we like their data because you can immediately, if you imagine a, a typical Twitter stream where you're looking at a hashtag and uh, it's a very popular event, you're getting a stream that's way too much to read, what's, what's a simple thing that you can do is to apply a filter that is the social authority. So you could say, okay, so clout has a score ratio uh, of between zero and 100. Okay, give me only people with a uh, social authority in technology above 50, and then suddenly you can maybe reduce the number of tweets down to you know a quarter of what they were. So we give that. We th we have a real-time platform, so you can basically um, build it into other products and be able to let's say you can deliver consumer products, but you can also we're working with a number of. Uh, big corporates who just want the data to munge once we've delivered to it. We're just the, we're just the platform in between. So what um, level of filtering uh, uh, that would you be able to do? So for example, in addition to just clout above 50, could you also do clout above 50 who, uh, you know, cover social CRM and productivity, for example. Yeah, so I mean, what's fascinated me was about this new world of real-time streams is that the old style of um, taking data from the web is very much spidering, so, i.e. you know where the web pages are, you look at the links that go between the web pages and you can basically go page scrape all of that content, that's what Google does. Um, but all you get from those pages is the HTML, you get the text, but with real-time streams you get a lot more structure. So what we wanted to build was a platform that let you filter against that structure, so every tweet contains about 30 fields of information. So it's not just the text, it's the uh, um, bio of the user. So if, if I wanted to actually filter out everyone who mentions the words social media and guru, you can remove them all. Um, which I'm sure, yeah. 
Um, but you might want to, people who mention their hobbies that you want to find, so any architects, any, you know, whatever else. Um, but along with that, you've got uh, Twitter has actually kind of blazed a trail alongside the uh, other geo companies, and it's probably not a well-known fact, but they actually, um, in, with every tweet, they resolve down any geolocation down to a place name. So you can immediately just do a filter which says anything that is in Starbucks. And because they are automatically resolving the geo where you are, if that is within a radius of a Starbucks, you are deemed to be in Starbucks. And so I can literally find, so even if they don't mention in the tweet that they're in Starbucks, you can still find you're in Starbucks. Um, so kind of perky, it is kind of pri pri privacy concerns gone mad, um, but these, you know, the data is out there. That, that's not an issue for us. We are, we are just a supplier of, uh, a, you know, a technology. How it gets applied is is different matter. But it's it's just an example of, you know, what the data is. So an, an, another really interesting one, a very simple social authority is, you know, just the number of follow accounts you've got. You know, I only want tweets from people with more than 100 followers. Um, or a follower ratio, which is used a lot. So, you know, uh, have you got 10 times more followers than you are following? So if you've got more followers than, um, than you are following, then then you are probably a social media guru. So <laughs> does that, is that one of the things that Clout uses in terms no, of the I, ratio? Their, theirs is way more complex than that. But, um, you know, they, they look at the kind of things you share, how the conversations you have, um, you know, it's, it's the usual kind of magic source behind the scenes. I don't know exactly how it works, but uh, there's, a, there's a number of companies uh, out there, you know, uh, doing these things. But for, uh, for us, what we're most interested in is uh, being able to give the people who use our platform as many variables to filter against. And so to kind of answer your original question, the, the world can be as complex as you like. So it's, it's, it's a programming language. And so like with any other programming language, what you do is only as clever as the person who's programming it and who has the imagination to come up with how to do it. So if you want to uh, give us import a database of 10,000 geolocations or a thousand swear words, so that's been very popular. We have lots and lots of people setting up filters based upon different languages with a very long list of swear words. I was quite impressed by how many swear words there actually are. In well, the, in I would the also English imagine language. competitive, right? Competitive information that you're trying to track. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we've we've got some experiments going on uh, with financial tracking. There's uh, obviously been quite a few research papers recently showing that the future can be predicted, um, and that you know, you, so you can track stocks. Um, and then you can look at the uh, volume of uh, how much those stocks have been talked about. You apply sentiment analysis to understand, and then you can spot trends perhaps maybe m even if it's 30 seconds earlier than someone else, then that can give an edge to uh, you know, some sort of trader. So, and then really what g it goes back to our original roots of tweet meme where you know, we spotted the um, news about the plane going into the Hudson probably 10 minutes for any news agency purely because uh, TweetMeme is very good at recognizing patterns of how uh, a compressed volume of retweets occurring in a short space of time to know whether that is something important that's happening very quickly. Um, so and 10 minutes is significant. Yeah, yeah, Matt, in the, the, yeah. I mean, I think in the last year since we launched, lots of other companies are, you know, um, have realized how important Twitter is in that. What we're trying to do now is actually be able to read the signals from more than just Twitter, so we're taking real-time feeds of comments because a lot of things get discussed inside comments as well that you need to, again, mm -hmm. you know, someone might make a mention of a stock, again, financially within a comment, you know, so you need to track all of them. But the most important is that it's, that it's not spidering and that it's actually the structured data so that if a comment is left on discuss or, you know, whatever else, that we actually know who the user is Therefore, we can understand what their social uh, authority is, what they're interested in. Um, we can even uh, link that profile to other profiles and other social networks. So there's lots of companies at the moment also looking at that kind of cross-social graph. You I mean, know. Do you do that organically, or does the person have to fill in their, you know, I, I'm on YouTube here, I'm on Facebook here, or do you automatically no, detect there's a, that? there's a number of companies, and we're, we're basically, again, we're, like we have with Clout, partnering with other companies that do this, that um, do the connectivity between 
the social network. So they might have different names. They exactly. I, 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 I don't understand the technology behind the scenes, but a lot of them are, you know, very simplistically because most people, you know, I, I use Nick Housted on every, you know, try and grab it on every single uh, new service that comes out. And so that's an easy, easy win. But I think there's a uh, cross matching of email addresses. Um, do you have it on about.me yet? Uh, I don't think I do. Tony Conrad's new company. No, afraid not. Yeah. Um, go grab it. <laughs> I just learned about it. Yeah, I, I'd rather have Nick actually on all of them, but I never managed to grab it on Twitter, not early enough. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you might know a few people where you might be able to change that now. <laughs> yes, possibly. I'd let, you know, it just N would be good, but I don't yeah. think you're allowed to single characters. But um, it's, yeah, so, you know, that's going to change the shape of things as well, be, being able to, you know, and obviously, the lot, again, lots of privacy concerns that get raised with these things. So if you're um, the platform layer in between, yep. who, who's your top three or four customers in that particular case? So from a B2B, it's very much CRM. So it's been able to give a lot more power to, you know, so any use of something like Radian 6, we're working with a number of companies that are, you know, in that space that want to be able to give uh, their brands much better ability to track things. So just to give you an example, you, if you're tracking one of your products within your brand and uh, it's uh, coming up for a launch or whatever, what you actually want to do is not just spot all the mentions of that product, you want to obviously deep delve into links that are being shared, so is any pictures of it being posted, is there any videos about it being posted, but mostly is actually all then linked with social authority, you want to be able to be alerted, so maybe you know, there might be 10,000 people who make a mention of it, how the hell do you deal with that? So we can give the ability to prioritize um, which ones to respond to. So, okay, so who's got the social authority above 80? So Robert Scoble suddenly says something bad about your tech company. You want to go and respond to that immediately. You, you know, you've got 8,000 other people with, you know, who aren't going to create a big wave of things. So it's all about being able to give them those extra abilities um, and be able to dive into more than just Twitter. Okay, last question. Sure. Where can people find out more online and also on Twitter? Okay, so I'm Nick Housted on Twitter and uh, datasift.net. Uh, uh, well, actually, we luckily just got the .com, so datasift.net or .com, mm -hmm. and uh, there's videos on there. It's still actually the datasift, even though it's been uh, used by uh, a load of big corporates, it's still in alpha, but uh, people can go and sign up and uh, try and get on the, uh, come up with some ideas. We're, we're datasift. Datasift. Yeah. .com and .net. Yes. And Nick Halstead, for those who could not get the accent, that's <laughs> H-A-L-S-T-E-A-D. Yes. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Nick, and we're signing off in Dublin.